everybody. Tiffany here from the Inspire Shop. Welcome to week three of our Call to Freedom Words Creative Bible Study. This week, our theme is praising God. So we think about our words as we were talking about the last few weeks. Praising God, I think, is really uh, just the basis of what our words are made to do, right? Scripture says that if we don't praise God, even the rocks are going to cry out to him right? That's a pretty big uh, statement there. Uh, so when we think about our words and what we're using them for, I think a large part is going to be for praising God. That's um, what we are created to do, to be in relation with God. As we see back in Ad Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they were with God. They were hanging out, um, praising God. And so this week, uh, we are going to be talking about Mary and her song that she sings. So that is found in Luke chapter 1. So I'm going to go ahead and read uh, her praise song, and then we'll talk about that. So this is found in verse uh, 46. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. So here we see Mary singing this beautiful song of praise. And it sounds like, yay, Mary's got all this stuff going on. She has so much stuff uh, to be uh, praising God about. And yet, <laughs> uh, the context of the scripture, so important. Uh, what I love about this verse, uh, Mary praising God, she is praising God in the unknown. She has no idea uh, what's coming before her. So this is Luke chapter 1. And this is where Mary has been visited by an angel. So an angel of God comes and says, you are going to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You're going to have a baby. And her response um, is so beautiful. She says, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And so he tells her all these things, right? It's going to, he's going to reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. This baby that she's going to conceive. And so she's young, and she is already engaged uh, to, to Joseph. And yet this angel comes and interrupts her life, right? She wasn't expecting an angel to visit her, I'm pretty sure, right? She's terrified when he gets there. And he tells her all of these things. And yet she says, behold, I am a servant. She does ask one question. She said, how will this be since I'm a virgin? So she's wondering like, how is she gonna conceive? And so the angel tells her, uh, just like the power of the Holy Spirit will come on her. And then she says, okay, like I am your servant. And then she goes on um, after she visits uh, her cousin who is also, uh, she was barren, she wasn't able to have children. And so in that culture, she, uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah, that would be really shameful in their culture because children were the essence of the community. And so they had a lot of shame on them uh, because they weren't able to have children. And yet here she finds out that uh, she's having a baby. And so she goes to visit her as well. And she pours out uh, just this beautiful song of praise to God, despite all these unknowns uh, that are to come in her life. And Mary is pregnant. So you think about her context, so she is pregnant. She's not married yet. She has, um, she's engaged, right? And then Joseph like wants to leave her because, but he's going to leave her quietly because he's a good man. He doesn't want to like make a big ruckus. Um, 
And so there's all of these different social contexts of that time. You think about Mary, like racing through all these different scenarios and what people are saying about her possibly. And um, yet she's praising God through that. And we have the opportunity as well in our life to be praising God, despite our unknowns, what other people are conceiving about um, our situation, what other people think about us. Uh, we can praise God because God is good, despite what everyone else says or understands or think that they know um, about us and what we're doing. Um, and so as we study Mary, uh, as I talked about Zachariah and Elizabeth, I think it's good to talk about Zachariah's um, visit as well from the angels. So we're talking about that this week as well. So an angel came to Zechariah. He was a priest in the temple. So he's in there serving. And um, the angel comes to him, but he had a little different response uh, to, to that. And so the angel tells him, you know, don't be afraid. You are going to, your wife's going to have a baby, right? Um, she's going to have a son, and you're going to call his name John. And he tells her all of these exciting things. The power, He's going to have the power of the spirit of Elijah on him. And then Zechariah asks the angel, How shall I know this? For I'm an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And so uh, the angel responds, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And so here we see Zechariah is in a different place in his response in all these situations uh, than Mary was uh, to her angel encounter, if you will. <laughs> um, he's saying, how's this going to be? And so when I was going through their responses and thinking and praying through this, uh, really I think the thing that came to mind for me is Zechariah and Elizabeth, they, I'm sure they wanted a baby, right? She'd been barren for years. He was old. He never had a child. And so this was probably his spot that really hurt him. This was probably one of those spots where he would see, you know, everyone else's children and he always wanted one. And then an angel comes and says, you're going to have one. And that probably just really got his heart, right? Like, how is this going to be? Like, like someone tells you something, right? And you just see all of this stuff and all that hurt is like coming up and all the emotion uh, in that moment. And I'm sure that was how Zachariah felt in this, despite, you know, an angel talking to him, <laughs> which is not normal, right? I'm sure all of those things probably came out at that time. And so all of his past circumstances and hurt or coming to fruition, I think, at this part. And he isn't fully able to praise God yet because he's just like, how? Like, I've seen all this, you know, all these years, there hasn't been any child. Um, and so then he has a consequence uh, because of that, because of his heart through there. I think that kind of does reflect a little bit on his heart because um, our response always has some sort of um, play out. And I can really relate to his response. I'm sure a lot of us can, right? Like, how's this going to be because of our past, because of things that we have seen and experienced, right? God tells us he's going to do something. The Bible says that God's going to do something, right? How's he going to take away my pain and my hurt, all the suffering that I've gone through, right? We don't believe. And so maybe we do suffer a consequence because of that, because we choose not to believe. Um, just like we saw last week in the Israelites, when they chose not to believe that they could conquer that land, right? And their children had consequences as well, right? When we choose not to believe, there will be consequences. And so Zachariah's consequence was he wasn't able to speak. Like he, it also says he possibly might have been deaf, um, they believe. So he isn't able to speak up until the birth of his son, right? So nine-ish months, <laughs> he's not able to communicate. And so... The interesting thing uh, that I find in that is they knew when he came out and he wasn't able to speak. He was in there for a long time uh, when the angel visited. And so the priests were wondering what was going on with them. So he comes down, he's not able to speak, and they knew that something had happened. And so even there, the Lord is already working um, for John the Baptist, who will be his son, and showing that he set John apart at his first special task. 
And then at the birth, right, everyone, um, it says in verse 65, um, that fear came over the neighbors and they knew that the hand of the Lord was on him. And so despite Zechariah's disobedience, they knew that God was up to something that he had been working and taking away his voice, right? He was giving John the Baptist a voice to proclaim repentance um, over Israel. And so even in our consequences, in our uh, heart, in our hard heart of places, um, God is still working, God is still moving, and he'll be glorified. Uh, but when we decide to praise God, uh, as we see Mary do, I think it's a lot better <laughs> for us. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's easy, uh, but there's definitely uh, something to be said about praising God through our storms and allowing the Lord to work in us and allow us to praise him, right? When we can't even pray for ourselves, the Holy Spirit is already interceding for us and praying for us. And so coming to that point where it says, God, like, I cannot praise you. Help me to praise you. Uh, it's a powerful thing uh, to be able to pray. And so this week, as we uh, just go out and talk about uh, praising God, uh, I just pray that wherever you're at in your circumstances, maybe you can relate more to Zechariah, maybe you can relate more to Mary, um, but just really praying for the Lord to allow you to praise him in that. Um, the links this week for the playlist have some of the Seeds Family worship songs. And so that is scripture put to music, which I love. This month has uh, several of their songs on there because they play into the scriptures uh, that we're using. And so I really encourage you uh, to listen to those, listen to the word of God um, and just praise him through that. Praise him with the word of God, praise him in song and worship. There's so many ways that we can praise the Lord. Uh, it's all um, up to you how you do that. <laughs> and so I pray that you'd find a way this week uh, just to be intentional. Um, praising God with your words. And with that, I will close. Have a great week. Cheers. Thanks.